Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to solve problem number 43 taken from chapter number 2, Force Vectors from the book of Engineering Mechanics, The Statics Part by R.C. Hibbler. So in this problem, we are being asked to determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force due to these three forces being acted on this member. The direction should be measured from the positive x-axis in counterclockwise direction. So let's solve this problem. So let's consider the body on which these forces are being applied. So there's an F1 force acting in a given direction and that has a magnitude of 850 Newton. We are not directly being given with the angle but we are being given with this right angle triangle. So we can calculate this angle using this formula. Using the 10 inverse formula with perpendicular 3 and 4 we can determine the angle. So on doing calculation, we are going to get the angle as 36.86 degrees. The second force is acting in the direction of 30 degree with the negative y axis and has a magnitude of 625 Newton. And F3 force makes an angle 45 with a positive y axis and has a magnitude of 750 Newton. This angle is 45 degrees. So there are various ways through which we can determine the magnitude of the resultant force. And the one that we are going to use is by converting all these forces into its component first, like an X and Y component. Then we will be determining the X component of the resultant force and Y component of the resultant force. And uh, using some formulas, we can determine the magnitude and as well as the direction. So the X component of the resultant force is actually equal to the summation of all the forces acting in the x direction since no force is acting in x direction therefore we need to resolve all these forces into x direction and summing all those and we are considering that the rightward forces are positive so f1 will have x component in this direction and so positive but we need to determine its magnitude this angle we just have determined that is 36.86 so x component will then be magnitude multiplied by the cos of 36.86 means 850 multiplied by cos 36.86 86. The x component of uh, the F2 force will be in this direction, hence negative. Since uh, we have been given with the angle making with the uh, y axis, we need to determine the angle with the x axis. So we know that total angle is 90, this will be then 60. Therefore, negative magnitude multiplied by cos of the angle, which is 60 degree. F3 force will also have a negative x component because its direction will also be in the negative x axis direction. If this is 45, so this will also be 45. So negative 750 cos 45. So on doing calculations, we are going to get the x component of the resultant force as negative 162.8 3 Newton. Similarly, we can determine the y component of the resultant force. So y component of the resultant force would be equal to summation of all the forces acting in y direction, taking the upward forces as positive. So y component of F1 will be downward, hence negative. So negative 850 multiplied by the sine of 36.86 because now we are determining the y component, hence sine. The y component of F2 will also be downward, hence negative. So negative 625 sine of 60 degree. F3 will have positive y component because of upward direction so positive 750 sine 45 so summing all these values we are going to get the y component of the resultant force as negative 520.94 newton so looking at the values of x and y component of the resultant force both are negative which convey the message that the direction of the resultant will be in quadrant where the x component and y component will be negative. So we all know that uh, this quadrant is the one where we will have both positive. This quadrant is the one where we will have x negative, y positive and this quadrant is the one where we are going to have x positive and y negative and this is the quadrant where we will have both negative. It means the resultant force will be 
in this direction. So now we need to determine the magnitude of the resultant force. The formula to calculate the magnitude of the resultant force is in under root rs square plus ry square. So putting the value of rx and ry, we are going to get the magnitude as 546 newton. This is one of the answer. Now the next thing that is being asked to us is the direction and we know the formula for determining the direction that is alpha is equal to 10 inverse the y component divided by the x component of the resultant. So if you put the values of x component and y component and determining its 10 inverse, you are going to get the alpha angle as 72.64 degrees. Now where is that alpha angle? Now alpha angle is this angle because we have used the y component and x component it means the component the rx component and our y component therefore if you are using this formula then this will be the angle the alpha angle but we are being asked to determine the angle that is being measured counterclockwise from positive x-axis it means this angle we are being asked so how we can determine this angle let's say the angle measured counterclockwise from positive x-axis is theta so this angle can be calculated by adding alpha with 180 degrees because this the angle measured from positive x-axis to the negative x-axis is 180 if you add alpha with it so then we are going to have the angle from positive x-axis measured counterclockwise so adding 72.64 with the 180 we are going to get the angle for the resultant force as 253 degrees so this so this is the another answer so magnitude is 546 and the direction from the positive x-axis made at counter counterclockwise is 253 so we have got both the answer so this is all from this video where we have learned about the calculations for determining the magnitude and direction of the resultant force when a body is being subjected to the multiple forces and we have used the method in which first we have determined the component of all the forces and then we have determined the component of the resultant forces and using the formula then we have calculated the magnitude of the resultant as well as its direction. So that's all from this video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you in next coming videos. Thank you.